All week we've been talking about climate change in our new series we call The Tipping Point, the point where changes to our climate become irreversible. From snowpack in the mountains to temperatures in the ocean, it's been a heavy topic and an understandable source of anxiety. We're being joined by a psychologist who's an expert in that field. Dr. Thomas Joseph Doherty specializes in eco-psychology to help people coping with anxiety and dread around the topic. I didn't even know there was yeah. such thing as eco-psychology. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Doherty. Thanks, Mimi. I'm glad to be here. Well, you've coined the term climate hostages. Tell us what that is. Well, uh, Mimi, I, that term came about uh, through my work with people in counseling and therapy and also with students. Uh, and it just it was meant to capture the pressure that people feel kind of trapped between their desires for a better world for themselves and for their community in terms of sustainability and all these things and also all the all the barriers they face in terms of changing behaviors because a lot of the you know the, the the sustainability and you know climate mitigation behaviors that people would like to do or are told to do by scientific reports are controlled by governments and people out, outside of their control so people feel kind of trapped and so it's helping people to just kind of recognize the emotional reality of that so they can come to grips with that and then and then re-engage in a, in, a, in a deeper way with some more more authentic, you know, getting a sense of their values and how they how they want to engage. And it can be stressful to think about all the snow in the mountains is going to go away or the oceans are going to rise. So how do you treat this inside therapy when you talk to people? Well, the first step is validating people's concerns and then elevating them, really saying this is important. This is as important as any other issue uh, and then getting creative about it, um, how what do you know? Where do you get your knowledge? For some people, it's really checking in on their on their media intake and their mm -hmm. news diet. A lot of these climate and environmental concerns just affect our nervous system, just like any other concern, like economic concerns or family concerns. So we get a stress reaction in our body, and then our body gets kind of keyed up. So a big part is basic stress reduction, mindfulness, kind of lowering our stress thermometer, as I would say. So it gives us a little more creativity an ability to calm down and be present. So some of it is it is quite, you know, common for for any kind of stressor. And then the the climate and eco stressors are unique because they kind of cut across all kinds of aspects of our lives. And again, they are kind of mysterious and out of control. Mm -hmm. And there was a tipping tipping point in the last couple of years, but particularly in the Pacific Northwest, with fires and the heat dome and things like that. So it, it does really start, you know, it affects how people plan their lives. How, even how they plan their summers. So it's it's a different scale. Right. So it's helping people to manage that larger scale of things. Well, one thing that you have said that sort of puts my mind at ease a little is that even down the road, our great, great grandchildren in the doomsday scenario of climate change, if it is the worst that we're predicting, there still will be good days. That's sort of a calming way to think about it. What is the takeaway for people that may be over anxious about climate change? Yeah, and I'm careful about that statement of good days because, you know, we know there will be bad days too. There will be an increase in storms and fires and, and various things. So you or I or someone is in the wrong place at the wrong time, it could be very bad. Right. But on top of that, there will be days that will be okay. We'll have ability to make changes and also our, our systemic ability to cope with climate impacts is growing day by day. And so I think it's, it's a question of hope in the sense of one's highest vision of the possible. So having a vision of the possible that includes these problems, but also how we're going to adapt, how we're going to overcome, how we're going to contribute to some solutions. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the direction to go. Well, it's uh, something that affects every yeah. single person living on this planet. So yeah. it's been really interesting to talk with you about this uh, expert um, field called eco-psychology. Great to have you on the show. Thanks so much, Dr. Doherty. Thank you. Thank you both. Good luck to you.